اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق الصلاه والسلام والتهيه والاكرام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين حبيب اله العالمين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا ومولانا مولا ثقلين جد الحسن والحسين الذي سمي في السماء باحمد وفي الارضين باب القاسم محمد وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين اذهب الله عنهم رجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد ولعنه الدائمه على اعدائهم ومنكري فضائلهم وغاسبي حقوقهم من ليله هذه الى صباح يوم الدين اما بعد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله يغضب لغضب فاطمه ويرضى لرضاها صدق مولانا ومقتدانا رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم صلوات الله على محمد وعلى ال محمد Tonight is one of the greatest Eid the Eid the celebration of the lady of light the greatest lady of Islam Sayyidatu Nisa'il Alamin min al-awwalina wal akhirin the daughter of the holy prophet Fatima az-Zahra salamullah alayha salawat Allahumma salli ala tahniyat tabrikat greetings to the imam of our time imam al hujja alayhi salam to all our maraja azam ulama e karam mu'minin mu'minat throughout the world especially those who are present here from among brothers from the among the sisters on this auspicious night of the birth anniversary and uh, on this great celebration for this anniversary birth anniversary of the lady of light may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercies bless all of you by coming here and by taking part in this in this great celebration of the birth of the holy lady of islam in the first part of uh, today's milad i would speak about uh, some of the rights of women as mentioned in the holy quran and in the sharia al muqaddas and try to give answer to some of the misconceptions which are related to this issue of the rights of women and this is a burning issue everywhere it is discussed nowadays this issue is discussed a lot sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad sorry for this interruption <clears throat> this is a burning issue in the sense that some people have misconceptions and we l- would like and uh, this is our duty to address and remove the misconceptions about this issue of the rights of women in islam So that will be the first part and in the second part I would like to recite some poetry in Farsi and then translate it into English by a famous poet who has written very nicely about the holy lady of Islam the famous poet Alama Dr Muhammad Iqbal So with this in the second part uh, we will bring our celebration towards our end 
Coming to the first part, which is the uh, solving and giving answer to the misconceptions and the issue of the rights of women in Islam. Many things have written, many things are uh, uh, explained by our scholars about, about the issue and answers are given to the questions which are related to the rights of women. But if you do a little bit of comparative study between the teachings of Islam, especially when it comes to the Holy Quran, which is the most authentic source, and the teachings in the Gospels and other books of the other religions, you will find that there is a big difference. Whatever Islam has said is very nice about the rights and praise the woman, whether it is in the Holy Quran or in the Holy Ahadith of the Masumin alayhi salam. When the issue of rights of women comes, you will see that we find different kind of teachings in the Gospels, in the Bible, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Saint Paul is a famous personality. He says, and it is in the Gospel, uh, Timothy 2, uh, verses 11 to 16, where he says that the women has no right to speak and the women should be silent and, he, and she has no authority over the others. And long, long ago it was discussed by the scholars before Islam to, to see that whether a woman is a human being or not, it is some other type of creation. So they were not uh, able, they were not ready to accept her as a human being. This is the religions before Islam. And even if you go to those religions which are not Abrahamic religions, you will find that how badly the woman was treated. Hinduism, where there is a caste system and there are four castes. One is the lowest, the lowest is the fourth one, Shudras, untouchable, and then there are other castes. So women was also put in a very low caste. Same is the case with the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we see that the woman was not given that dignity, not given that right. And it was always discussed and it was told and it was written in the books that this is something of low grade, a very low grade, something whose grade is very low. I don't want to use the word, which is a very bad word, but even in the books it is written that she was compared to an animal. like. We see that animals are low. So, Nauzubillah, God forbid, the woman was treated like animal in before Islam and in the books of the Holy Scriptures and the Gospels and, and the other books. So, we read in the Bible that when it comes to the story of Adam salam and Hawa alayha salam, Adam and Eve. The Bible put all the blame on Eve and they say that it was because of her that Adam salam, was driven out from Jannah and they have written that and they mean it and even they say it clearly even today. So they say that Hawa, she was the cause of all the problem and then they write that because of this, that she tempted Adam salam, and they were driven out of the heavens of that garden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished her by giving her the pain during pregnancy. And in some of the books of Jews, they say that it is a curse on the women that she has to pass through all the pain during the childbirth 
And this is also, they have mentioned around nine curses on women because of Adam, because of Hawa alayhi salam, tempted Adam alayhi salam. And because of this, they say that there are nine curses on her. She has to cover her head. Now, according to their mentality, covering of head is a curse. And they say that she has to cover her head because of the curse, because she was the reason of all the, the root cause for uh, Adam al -Islam and Hawa to be uh, driven out of the garden. And then there are other curses like pregnancy. According to them, pregnancy is also a curse. And uh, man uh, has no pregnancy and woman has to go through pregnancy and through pain. And this is a curse because of what she did. And she is the cause. Now this is what they believe. But when it comes to Islam and Quran, see the verses of the Holy Quran. Quran and Islam has never said that she was the cause. Quran clearly says that both were responsible for this. Now it is Tarki Awla, according to our school of thought, they did not commit a sin. What they did was Tarki Awla. And I explained before that what is the meaning of Tarki Awla. Tarki Awla is, it's better to, to do this thing, but if you don't do it, it's not obligatory to do it, and if you do it, it is not haram. So, Turkey awla is not, count, is not counted as sin, as uh, ism in Arabic, which is called zam and ism, Turkey awla is not counted as sin. So, they did Turkey awla, but who was responsible for Turkey awla? Quran says both. And the uh, siga which is used in the Holy Quran is Siga Diu, Tathniya. In Arabic language, we have Wahid, which is singular. Then we have Tathniya Diu, two is called Tathniya. And then we have Jama'a, three, and more than three is called plural, or Jama'a. So the Siga which is used here in the story of Adam salam and how salam is all Tathniya. That is dual for two. For example, the Holy Quran says, Wala takraba hazihi shajara. Don't you two people, you two. At that time there were two people. You Adam and Hawa. Don't go, both of you, don't go near this tree. Wala takraba. So this is dual, which means that you both of you. Watakuna fatakuna. Otherwise, you will be from those who are uh, unjust. So, fatakuna, again with alif, which is tasneen. And in our sharia, in, in our traditions, it is clearly said that both were responsible for turkey awla, not only one. Let's suppose, let's suppose, if Hawa alayhi salam, according to the religions before Islam, according to them, if Hawa alayhi salam was responsible for this sin or this tarki awla, why the children, why the daughters of Hawa alayhi salam should be punished for something which they did not commit? Let's suppose if Hawa committed it and she was responsible, she tempted Adam alayhi salam towards tarki awla, but it doesn't make sense. Islam says that another, for one sin of one person, another cannot be responsible. I cannot take the responsibility of the sins of my father or my elders. Similarly, the children are not responsible for what their father do. Father is not responsible for what the children do. So here, in this case, again, it is against intellect, against aql, to say that because of Hawa alayhi salam tempted Adam alayhi salam. That's why she has to pass through all these curses and she has given this pain and this problem and this problem and this problem. This is one thing which is from the books of religions before Islam, from the scriptures and the teachings of the Holy Quran. 
In fact, when we come to the teachings of Islam, we find out that Islam has mentioned in the Holy Quran many, many places with very respect about men and women. Wherever Quran says, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, O those who believe, both are included in it, whether that is man or woman. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu includes both man and woman. Not only that, there are special verses for the importance of the women, for their role, and Quran has said this many times. In one of the verses, we see that how beautifully Quran explains the relationship between the husband and the wife. Quran says, Hunna lebasun lakum, wa antum lebasun lahunna. Husbands are like garments to the wives. Wives are garments to the husband. Husband and wife are garments to each other. Garment is a beautiful explanation of the nearness of the husband and the wife. Garment is something which protects a person. Garment is something which a person looks and he wants to wear nice clothes, nice garments. And Quran says that husband and wife are to each other garments. This is a beautiful example in the Holy Quran. Similarly, in one place, the Holy Quran mentioned about 10 qualities of a believing man and believing woman together. So Quran will say, Inna al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat, wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat, wal-Saimina wal-Saimat, wal-Kanitina wal-Kanitat. Ila akhir, 10 qualities are mentioned for men and women both together. So that there should be equality, equality of the ahkam, equality that both are human beings, equality that whoever does good deeds, he or she both will get the same reward, same thawab reward for whatever they do. Not on the basis of gender, that because one gender is good, another gender is not good. Even the scripture says that uh, she, the, the woman is not allowed that she should be taught or she should teach. Teaching, she should remain silent. This is what the scriptures and the books before Islam says. That she has no right to speak. She has no right to teach. While the Holy Quran, we have many examples. There is a surah in the Holy Quran which is called Surah Mujadila, which is chapter number 58. And in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O Prophet, He addresses to the Holy Prophet, says, Kad same Allah. No, it starts with Kad same Allah. Allah says that, O Prophet, I heard the plea of a woman who came to you. Wa ashtaka ilallah, wa, wa ashtaka ilallah, and had shikaya and complained towards Allah from her husband. I heard that, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the answer to her plea and the answer to her complaint is this, this, and that. So the story is, was that there was a woman by the name of Khawla, and she was from uh, Bani Khazraj the tribe of Ansar. Ansar were those people who were the residents of Medina. Muhajir, Muhajirin were those who came from Makkah. They, they did Hijrah and came to Medina. So the two big tribes in Medina were Aus and Khazraj. One of the ladies from the tribe of Khazraj by the name of Khawla, she was married to a man. And the man got in a dispute the husband got in a dispute with his wife. This is when the Holy Prophet was in Medina and the Hijrat took place. And in the olden days of, before, even before Islam, there was a kind of talaq, divorce, which is also similar to qasam and oath. That is, if someone, if the husband says to his wife that your back is like the back of my mother, then she becomes haram on him. This is called zihar. Zihar is from zahar. Zahar means back. 
This is a kind of qasam and a kind of talaq, a kind of divorce. Even today the ahkamat are there, ahkam of zihar is there. So even this was before Islam. The people when they went into dispute, they will say, oh, I'm not going to maintain relationships with you, the relationship of husband and, husband and wife. And from now onwards, your back is like the back of my mother. That is, you are haram on me. Now, during the dispute, the husband told Khawla that you are haram on me, that I'm giving you talaq. Later on, when the things settled down, and he noticed that, oh, I did something wrong, and, uh, b b but it was a divorce. Now, what to do? And they don't have the relationship. He and she said that, okay, you, you have done zahar, so I cannot uh, uh, live with you like the wife lives with her husband. And she came to the Holy Prophet and said, what is the solution? Now, he is saying that, I'm sorry, but is this enough or there is some solution for it? The Holy Prophet said, wait till the order comes. Isbir, wait. Have patience and wait. Patience and wait. So after some time when the Holy Prophet told her to, to, have, to wait and have patience, have sabr and wait, the verses of the Quran revealed and the Holy Prophet was told that Allah, Allah says now, O oh, Holy Prophet, I heard the plea of the woman who came to you with the complaint about her husband. So tell her that the solution is this. Now Quran has, Quran listens to uh, an ordinary woman from Khazraj and Quran mentions this is the right of woman which Quran gives. So the Holy Prophet called Khawla and called uh, her husband and said that uh, Allah has given me the solution. Are you able, he told to the husband, are you able to free a slave because of kafara, atonement for what you did and what you said? This is the kind of talaq. So in order to come back, this is one kafara is to free a slave. He says, no, I can't, I don't have, I cannot afford to free a slave. The Holy Prophet said, okay, can you fast for 60 days as a penalty? Kafara. He said, oh, that, that will also be very hard. The Holy Prophet said, can you feed 60, people, 60 poor and needy? He said, yes, this I can. Arabs were good in uh, hosting and in, uh, uh, they love guests. So he said, okay, I, I will do that. He said, okay, do this and everything is solved. And, and she can go back to your house as your wife. So this is just one example that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to a plea of an ordinary woman and puts solution for this is 1400 years ago. These are the solutions which, uh, uh, which Islam has for the, and these are the rights which Islam gives to the woman. Now I don't want to be, uh, to make it very lengthy. Let me give you another example and then I go to the second part. One of the common things which are asked, and it is a misconception when it comes to the rights of women, they say that, oh, the, when it comes to inheritance, a woman is given half and the man is giving full or double of the woman. Well, this is a very common question. Many ulamas, scholars have written books and, and, and they give answer to this question. But because it is something which is, uh, it comes uh, all the times, relevant question, that's why I want to just give you a quick answer. It's a very relevant question. Why the share of the boy or male is double than the share of a woman? Well, answer, answer to this question. Islam has given double share to male and half to the female because, not because of the gender, but because of the responsibilities. Responsibilities of men are more than women. How? Man, it is obligatory on man to bring food and other requirements, livelihood, in which clothes are there, 
other things are there for himself and for his wife and for his children while the woman this is not her responsibility if she says i don't want to do no one will according to islam no one will come after her saying no you have to no this is not her responsibility this is the responsibility of a man again this is the responsibility of the male of the man husband to give mahriya to the woman when when they are getting into uh, nikah and marriage this is his responsibility while whatever is her which she brings with her from the from the house of her parents this is all belongs to her no one has the right to take it from her this is all hers she gets mahriya also she gets nan wa nafaqa islam has says nan wa nafaqa that is whatever is needed in the family the husband has and if the wife wants to help him it is good she wants to share it this is her will if she says no i will work for myself and i want to save the money for myself the husband has no right to say no you have to give it to me but the her, the wife has the right to ask her husband to give her food and clothes and other things so this is the responsibility or less that's why islam says that and then or above that it is the responsibility of the male to take care of his parents old parents and other things so when it comes to responsibility the responsibilities are more so islam says the share should be according to that another thing is when it comes to witness that why two women are equal to one male witness it means that she is low nauzubillah wa mazalla if we want a witness if there is one man the and he, and, and the, the man is going to be a witness one is enough but if there is no man and two women wants to be witness then there will be two of them so two women is equal to one while they want to do to give witness answer well to be witness is not something uh, which is uh, so much serious that the women and the other people should think that why the two are equal to one maybe islam wants that not to involve her no no not to bring her into court not to bring her into these issues she has more uh, sentiments and her build up her akhlaq her ethics is something that uh, she is loving she is caring and these things are opposite to what is the ethics of a woman in this case if islam says that a male should be witness so it is giving priority to the woman to sit at home you don't need to come out and you don't need to be involved in in, in witnessing let the man do it and for your dignity and for your uh, the role which which is a very important role given to you it's better to stay at home that's why there are two witness two women equal to one in witness and last thing is about when it comes to polygamy why man is allowed to marry more than one while for the woman it's not the case the woman is only women can marry one at a time but man can go for the second the third and the fourth at a time so this is something uh, which uh, people think that this is a uh, difference and and the man has given more rights and more power answer what i believe is that marriage is protection giving protection to someone so when you marry one woman you are giving protection to one woman and if you are marrying the second then you are giving protection to the second but again with the conditions islam says that there are if you fulfill the conditions then it is allowed otherwise for wahidatun then one is enough for you in the case of a woman it's not the case in that case the woman for her dignity and for her 
uh, role in the society she it is not good for her to go for the second the third or the fourth for men it is on the other side we see that the population of women is twice or thrice or some says four times more than the men so <coughs> in this case we see that sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad When the women, their population is more, they need more protection. If there is, let's suppose, the women are twice than the men. So if they are twice than the men, then they need to have more protection. And marriage is a kind of protection. If the unmarried women are more in the society, that society may cause corruption or may go towards corruption. because there are no marriages or marriages are few because the population of men is few again quran has clearly said that if you maintain the conditions and one of the condition is justice then you are allowed to go for the second we very clearly say that oh man is allowed to have four wives where quran has said where quran has said that man is allowed to have four wives where in sharia where in hadith in some of the countries like uh, iran and egypt and i heard recently turkey they have the condition that if a person wants to go for the second marriage he has to prove in front of a judge in the court that he has the means and he can afford to maintain the second wife if he cannot do that he is not given uh, he is not allowed to do that so he has to prove and how he has to prove he has to show his bank balance he has to show other means and when the everything is seen and everything is checked then with in certain condition certain circumstances he is given permission to go for that otherwise this is not the case islam has clear instructions when it comes to the marriage islam says that in this case some says oh islam has given the right of divorce in the hand of a man yes this is true the right of divorce is with the man but then there are other options like while during marriage if the uh, girl wants to put some conditions that i want that this should be given to me at the time of marriage and she can take this uh, as a Uh, sharait uh, zimn aqad it is called sharait zimn zimn aqad and it, in in that case she has she has the right to do that and she also has given the rights uh, during marriage whatever condition she has islamic condition which is given to her she can say those conditions and those conditions should be written and later on it should be fulfilled this is a brief explanation about the misconceptions and about the rights of women in islam if you compare it with before islam and if you read the holy quran in the proper way the hadith of the masumin alayhi salam you will find that the rights given to women the respect given to women is more than uh, the respect and rights given to women by other religions but islam is the religion which has given more rights and respect to women sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad coming to the second part of uh, our milad celebration grand celebration for the birth of the lady of light i have some uh, poetry some ashar uh, in farsi Uh, with english translation from a very famous poet uh, alama dr muhammad iqbal you heard about him he is not uh, he wasn't uh, he was not an ordinary person he was a scholar a uh, philosopher a reformer and the one who has command over the holy quran uh, if you read his uh, poetry you will find out that he his ashar his poetry is is according to the verses of the holy quran 
and the message of awakening, how he tried his best to bring awakeness uh, in the Muslim Ummah. And I suggest that everyone has to read his poetry. I have two suggestions. One is to read the poetry of uh, Maulavi, which is uh, the, <coughs> the person uh, who, who, who has, who's called Maulana Rum. He's famous by Rumi. Rumi or Maulana Rum or Maulavi, these, these, these are few names. He was from Balkh, which is the present part in Afghanistan. He lived some six, seven hundred years ago. And he was from Balkh, but he was uh, living in the Turkey and in Syria, in, in this part. At that time, uh, that was the part of Roman Empire. I will not say Roman Empire because it was before Islam. But because this part is near to the Europe, so because of living in that area of Turkey, uh, he was called Maulana Rumi or Maulana Rum. He has thousands and thousands of uh, poetical verses. And his uh, couplets, the Ash'ar of Maulana Rum, is compiled into six volumes, maybe more. One of the compilation is six volumes. So six volumes has thousands and thousands. And what he said was to about, about the Quran. And some people say that Mawlana, the Kalam and the poetry of Maulana Rum is Quran in Farsi. And luckily, uh, people have translated Maulana Rum's poetry into English. So you can find in English and you can read that. And the second person is Alama Dr. Muhammad Iqbal who was real, really the lover of Alul Bayt and a person, a great scholar of our time. Everyone has, the people do PhD in Iqbaliyat, the studies of about Alama Iqbal. So the poetry which he has written, uh, it is amazing. Believe me, I have read many poetry and, and he has written this in Farsi so that the whole world should understand. Because Farsi was the medium which was understand in many places. It was easy for him to say this Ashar in Urdu. In Urdu also he has said many things. He has many poetry. But the most important poetry in which he wants to give message, he did that in Farsi. Farsi might not be his mother tongue, but he has so command over Farsi that even the Iranians of today when they read his poetry, they become surprised, astonished to see how a person in Pakistan who was born in Sialkot and he's buried in Lahore, was so much fluent in Farsi that the, pr the present Iranians cannot do and write poetry what he did in, uh, in long, long ago in, in, in the language which was not his mother tongue. And these Ash'ar are the Ash'ar, the Sha'r, in which he has uh, shown his love for Ahlul Bayt al Muslim. Each and every uh, poetical verse says, uh, uh, talks about and tells us about the great status of the Ahlul Bayt He says in Farsi that Maryam az yek nisbat Isa Aziz as se nisbat Hazrat Zahra Aziz Isa is famous prominent prophet because uh, he was a very prominent prophet. And Maryam, the mother of Isa is honorable because she was the mother of a prominent prophet. Mother of Isa is Maryam. This is one honor for her. But Fatima had, is honorable with three relationships. Maryam has one relationship which gave her honor. Fatima has three. Maryam was honorable because of Isa alayhi salam. And Hazrat Zahra alayhi salam was honorable because of her father who was the leader of all the prophets. And because of her husband who was leader of the Aimma, Abu al-Aimma, Sayyid al awsiya And the third relationship is she was the mother of two youth 
who were the leaders of the youth of paradise sayyid ay shabab ahl al jannah so this is what he is comparing he says nur e chashme rahmat lil alamin she is not an ordinary lady fatima is the light and delight of the eyes of the one who is rahmatul lil alamin the one who was blessing for the all the worlds on imam awwalin wa akhirin that prophet who was the leader of all the prophets from the beginning and up till the end then the second relationship which alama iqbal says is banuye an tajidar halata murtaza mushkil kusha shir e khuda she was the wife of that person about whom surah hal ata is revealed on whose head there is crown of hal ata hal ata alal insan hinu min ad dahr she is the wife of that person about whom allah has revealed surah hal ata the one who is chosen murtaza the one who is mushkil kusha who solved the problems problems who solved the problems of the people shere khuda and who the one who is line of allah and who is that person badsha kulbe aywani u yek husam wa yek zare samani u al do king ali alayhi salam the commander of faithul was a king but his house was a hut a small house kings use in lives in palaces but this king lives in a small house and what is uh, his belongings his belonging is one sword and one iron coat husam and zara this is what is he a king his belongings are only these two things and then the third thing for which he is honorable is madare an markaz e parkar e ishq madare an karama salar e ishq she is the mother of that youth of paradise who is the center of the love and devotion the one who is a burning light of haram that is imam hasan al-mustafa al-salam she is the mother of imam hasan al-salam that hasan tanashinat atish e paikar o ki pushte pozad bar sar e tajo nagin that hasan who who threw the crown and the throne so that there should be no differences in the umma of the holy prophet in order to bring them together and there should be no fighting that hasan did sulah peace treaty and he said i don't want throne i don't want crown i want that the umma of the holy prophet should be together in order to uh, do that he Uh, he said no to the crown and to the uh, throne and then not only this wa an digar maulai abrare jahan quwwat e bazu e ahrare jahan she is also the mother of a person who who is husain who is leader of all the pious and the one who is a passion to humanity she is the mother of that personality husain در نوای زندگی سوز از حسین اهل حق حریت اموز از حسین دوز ہو ار ٹروتھ فل دے لرن وٹ از ٹروتھ فرام حسین سم پیپل مائٹ سے علامہ اقبال ویئر یو ار گوئنگ یو ار ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی لیڈی اف لائٹ ناؤ یو ہیو چینج یو وینٹ ٹو حسن اینڈ حسین اینڈ امیر المومنین اینڈ دی ہولی پروفٹ یو چینج یور سبجیکٹ ہی گیوز آنسر ٹو دس ہی سیز سیرت فرزند ها از امهات جوہر صدق و صفا از امهات نو 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 آئی ہیون چینج مائی ٹاپک آئی ایم اسٹل ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا لیڈی اف لائٹ فاطمہ تو زہرا بٹ دا کریکٹر اف سنز ار بلڈ بائی مدرز اسپرٹ اف ٹروتھ فلنس اینڈ اونیسٹی کم فرام مدر مدر از دا فرسٹ کول اف ا بیبی دا لیب اف دا مدر از دا فرسٹ کریڈل اف لرننگ اسکول for a baby so that's why i'm talking that these two sons of 
The Amir al Mu'min and Fatima to Zara, they, they were very high, their standard was so high because of the mother, and who, and the mother is Fatima to Zara, alayhi salam. And then he comes again and talks about her uh, qualities, how big qualities she had. Mazra'i Tasneem Ra Hasil Batul, Madra Ra Uswai Kamil Batul. If someone wants to see what is submission, submission to the will of Allah, the best example is the example of Fatima to Zahra, submission to the will of Allah. Bahri Mahtaji, Dilish Anguni Sukht, Ba Yahudi Chadare Khudra Farukht. She, when Sail came, someone came to ask something and she had nothing to give, she gave her Chadare Tathir and say, okay, uh, this chadar and on, on, on the, her wedding dress, the, the night w uh, in which she w uh, wore her wedding dress, when a girl came and asked something, the holy lady of light gave her dress, the wedding dress to her. So this is how generous she was. No one will go empty handed from her house. Nuri waham ashati waham Nuri waham atashi farman barish gum razaish dar rezai shoharish. Those, the angels were uh, listening to Fatima to Zahra. But she was thinking about the, about her uh, husband, about Amir al Mu'minin, that Amir al Mu'minin is happy from me or not. Angels are happy from Fatima to Zahra, but she is looking for happiness of Amir al -Mumini. And then, on adab parwarde sabro reza, asiya garda walab Quran sara. When she was grinding the wheat in the, with the hand mill, at that time, the people complained, oh, this is very tough job. This is something which is very hard. Why should I do it? Why, why should not someone bring me uh, the from outside, or someone should come and help me. No, she is doing a hard job and reciting Quran. On her lips, there are verses and surahs of Quran while grinding the uh, wheat, while gr grinding the hand mill, which is something which is very, very hard. And then at the end, let, let me finish on this last share, uh, and then Iltimas e Dua. Iqbal says here something which is, uh, uh, I will say no one has said this before, and he said it. He says, Rishta aine haq zanjeer paas, paas e farmane janab mustafas. He says that I have to take care of haram and halal, and I have some, uh, something that I cannot say and do. Why? Because someone will say, oh, he becomes kafir, what he's doing. So there are certain obstacles in my way. Otherwise, if these obstacles were not there, the obstacles of constitution of Islam, the obstacles of halal and haram, the obstacles of you should do this, you should do not do this, what the Islamic ahkam, if these Islamic ahkam were not there, warna. Garde torbatish gardamidam sajdaha barkha ke upashimidam. If these things, obstacles were not there, if halal and haram were not there, I would have done tawaf around the grave of Fatima to Zahra and I would have done sajda, prostration to the grave of Fatima to Zahra. But because Islam has certain limitations, because of these limitations, I don't do tawaf around the grave of Fatima. And I don't do such the prostrations on the turbat of Fatima to Zara. Salamu alayha. Salu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Now this is the time for dua after reciting the fazail of Fatima to Zara alayha salam. And tonight is the night of uh, her milad. And this is the night of Eid. So we want Eidi from Fatima to Zara alayha salam. So whatever hajat you have, ask your hajat from Allah on this auspicious night 
from Allah through Fatima to Zara, salamu alayha. I will say, uh, uh, I will say in these words that Ilahi bihaqi Fatima wa abiha wa baaleha wa baniha wal sir al mustad fiha. Oh Allah, whatever hajat we have, fulfill our hajat. Oh Allah, those who are ill, give them quick recovery. Oh Allah, those who are suffering from problems, remove their problems. Oh Allah, on this night, on this auspicious night of the Milad of Fatima to Zara, uh, salam, shower your mercies on our marhumin, especially the marhumin of those who are present here for tonight in this Milad. Oh Allah, give success to our youth, to every mu'min and mu'mina, Muslim and Muslima in the life and the hereafter. Oh Allah, wherever the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the lovers of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam, <coughs> and the lovers of Fatima to Zara live, Oh Allah, protect them from all kind of evils. Oh Allah, the problems which are going on uh, in the world, like the coronavirus and other things which are creating many problems, Oh Allah, I ask you to relieve us from all these problems of the world. And Allah, give us the intercession shifat of Muhammad Ali Muhammad on the Day of Judgment. Oh Allah, send the Imam of our time, Imam al hujja as soon as possible. And count us among his followers and friends. وَإِلَى الْأَرْوَاحِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ And for the marhumin of Hazirin Jalisin, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ كَرَعَ سُورَةُ الْمُبَارِكَةُ الْفَاتِحَةُ مَعَ السَّلَوَاتِ